Hi everybody, I'm Nathan. Through my content and right here on YouTube, my goal is to train and equip leaders to do church tech and event production with excellence. I get a lot of questions about using OBS for live streaming. So in this video, we're gonna dive into OBS and we're gonna start by getting audio into OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software, and this is a open source platform that's been developed over the years by a bunch of different people, and a bunch of different people use it. It's free to download, so you can go to the website, obsproject.com, and then you can download the latest version for Mac, Windows, or Linux. Okay, so once you have it downloaded, we can go ahead and open it, and I've got it in my bar here. So OBS, I'll go ahead and load that. And of course, it's gonna ask for updates because we wanna make sure we have the latest version of OBS. So the first thing I wanna do to get started is to get some audio inside of OBS. People ask me all the time, Nathan, how do we get audio from our X32 mixer into OBS? Okay, so I don't have an X32 plugged in today, but if I go up to my system settings, we're gonna go down to sound. You're gonna see here that I have, my, I have a Scarlett Solo USB. This is an audio interface. Um, the 2i2, this is the one I recommend. This is the fourth generation of the 2i2 interface. And really what that means is that on the front of it, there's two quarter inch inputs. And if we go to the back of it, there are, uh, I don't know if there's a picture of the back of it. Why is that so annoying? Why don't they show a picture of the back of it? But on the back of it, there's also two quarter inch for outputs. So you can see a comparison between the third and fourth generation here. The fourth gen has USB-C, whereas the third generation does not and third generation has full XLR on the front, but fourth generation does not, but you can always get converters. Today, I'm gonna use my Scarlett audio interface, and my microphone here is connected to the Scarlett audio interface, and then my Scarlett interface is connected to my computer, so I'm gonna go ahead in the bottom left of OBS, if you've never used OBS before, the first column on the left are the scenes. So we're gonna create one scene that has a bunch of sources in it, and then you can create a second scene with different sources. So we're gonna go ahead and just stick with our one scene and I'm gonna click plus on the sources and I'm gonna to go to audio input capture. We'll just call this Scarlet, okay? And then we'll click okay. So now it's gonna ask for the device that we're gonna use and I'm gonna click Scarlet Solo and then I'll click okay. And now when I talk in my mic here, Testing, testing, you can see that the audio is coming through. So I noticed that only one side is coming through and that's because this is a one input interface. I don't actually have the 2i2. So I'm gonna click the three dots here. I'm gonna go to advanced audio properties and I'm gonna go ahead and select mono for the Scarlet interface. Now if I click close, it will use that same mono source for both left and right. So there we have our Scarlett audio interface. We're bringing our audio channels in, testing, one, two. So if you have an X32, uh, you're gonna do the exact same process, connect it to USB, go in, select the X30, X USB as the audio input source, and then the next biggest thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have 32 channels coming in from the X32, whereas I only have one channel right here. So in OBS, I'm pretty sure there's no way to select the rest of the channels. Only channels one and two are gonna come into OBS from X32. So what you're gonna need to do is make sure your audio is being sent from the X32 to channels one and two on the card output. If I go real quick to the X32 software, let's say I'm connected right now to an X32 mixer, I'm gonna go to routing card, and this is where my output is gonna be sent. So right now output one through eight is being sent to card, and then if I go to the out one through 16 tab, I can see what is going to output one through eight. So one through eight is a mix bus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. In this case, mix bus one and two is gonna be going to the card going to OBS. We just need to make sure that the content going to X USB out one and two is what's going into OBS because that's what we're gonna be able to have access to. Audio is such an important thing to get right when live stream, but the second most important thing to get right is your video. So let's go ahead and move on to getting some video into OBS. And you're never gonna believe how we're gonna do this. We are gonna select sources, go to plus. In this case, I'm gonna select the Blackmagic device because I have a Blackmagic Recorder 3G connected to this computer and it's connected over HDMI and now I can see myself, hi. It's really cool because the Blackmagic a plugin allows you to select the SDI or HDMI connection, whereas normally you need to go into your applications folder, 
go up to the top, click on the desktop video software, and then you can switch between HDMI and SDI for the normal use case of the device. And I wanna make sure that I'm on HDMI actually, because that's where my device is my camera is connected. Okay, but in OBS you can select HDMI or SDI from this dropdown, which is really awesome. And now of course I can resize this, I can bring this up, and that's pretty much how you do that. If you wanna select other types of devices, if I double click on the Black Magic, it only gives us Black Magic devices, but there's lots of other inputs that we can select. Let's go to Video Capture Device and click OK. And here under Devices, there's a whole bunch of things that it'll give us access to. The MacBook's camera, hi, not as good of an image, that's for sure, but it works. We also have the OBS virtual camera. This is like the output camera that's coming into here and obviously that's gonna go crazy. We also have the Recorder 3G which comes through because it can act like a webcam. We have my phone camera because it's on the network. Let's see if we can get that to work. Hi, literally my phone camera is able to become a source. You can see here I've got some notes and there's OBS. I think we can also select the front view, oh, that's the desktop camera. It's like the front facing camera, but it like points it down really weird. And then I thought there was one more, the desk view camera. I think that's my front camera. Oh no, that's like desk view. I've never really understood desk view. Not really sure how that's supposed to be useful for like seeing the mouse. So you can select a bunch of other sources that are available to you from inside of here. Let's go ahead and delete that. And if you want to select the Mac screen capture, you can go to Mac screen capture and hit okay. And that should allow you to select the entire desktop. It's probably some kind of permissions thing. Let's go to system settings and go to privacy and security. Um, accessibility is usually a good one. Microphone is usually a good one. Mm, screen recording, oh, that's probably it. OBS, punch in my password. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. So you have to do the hoops for the permission stuff, but it does work. And now I can drag it around to make it fit my screen a little better. Okay, so that's kind of how you create a screen capture inside of OBS. And I think the next step is to go ahead and make an NDI output of ProPresenter and send that into OBS. So under sources, I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus. And if you don't see an NDI source, that means we need to install the tool kit basically. So I'm gonna type an NDI OBS tool plugin. NDI tools plugin. Okay, let's click on download right here. And that'll take us to maybe the correct, hey, the correct GitHub. Okay, so now let's go ahead and Mac OS. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install this and then close, move to trash. And I probably need to reboot or turn off and turn back on. I gotta stop using the word reboot. I've had people shut down computers when I said reboot. Okay, so it's gonna bring up this uh, error because it can't find the runtime. Let's go ahead and download that little plugin there. And we'll install this. And once we install the two of these things, then we should be good to go. We should be able to use NDI in our computer. Okay, close that, move the trash, okay. One more turn off and turn back on of OBS. And now if we click the plus under sources, we can see NDI source, and we'll go ahead and click okay on that, allow that, and there's no NDI sources happening right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and load ProPresenter. So here I am inside of ProPresenter. This is my ProPresenter template. So it gives us our multi-view in the top right. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this song. So when I clicked on this song, there's a macro here, the worship macro, and that's included in my template as well as all the looks and different things that you see here. So the we have the main output. I had it set to a different theme. It's kind of a more upper third because of an event we were doing. And our stream output has lower thirds and then our stage display has normal current and next slide text. Okay, so now let's go to screens, configure screens, because we need to set the stream output not to a physical output, but to an NDI output. So I'm gonna select new NDI and we're gonna do 1080, P, let's do 5994. So now we have a new NDI output that's called this. And let's go ahead and X out of that. And now I can go ahead and double click on my NDI source and we'll see the drop down here. Okay. 
Very cool. Let's close this, close this. Let's bring out my camera high. So that's our camera and then that's our NDI feed. Okay, so I'm noticing something that it is currently not transparent. So NDI has the ability to have transparency. That's one of the big reasons to use it between computers or on the same computer between software. In ProPresenter, I'm gonna to go to screens, configure screens, and under stream output, I need to go to the alpha key and I'm gonna select straight. I can't remember if it's straight or pre-multiplied, but one of these two is hopefully gonna give us some transparency. Hey, there we go. Transparency is what I was saying on the output of the NDI feed. So now when we have lower thirds, we're gonna get transparency. And when we have full screen stuff, let's go find on the stream output. Actually, this is saying, hey, we're not showing copyright material right now. That was a whole other video I did, but there you go. You can see that the full screen content is coming through when it's supposed to, and the lower third content is coming through when it's not supposed to. That is because of the macro set up here on the right side. Specifically, the worship macro sends us just the lower thirds and the full screen macro sends whatever's on the main output to the stream. And we also have the copyright material one that sends a specific graphic to the output instead of showing that. But go check out that video if you're interested. Okay, so that is how you get content out of ProPresenter into OBS for streaming. I always tell people that the goal is streaming in OBS is that you never touch OBS. You send your video from an ATEM switcher into the computer and you send your graphics from ProPresenter into OBS through the NDI link. So you set it all up in advance so that exactly what's going to the stream output layer is what you want on your stream at any given time. So to actually stream from OBS, go to settings, we're gonna go down to stream and now you can select your streaming service. Let's do like YouTube RTMP. And now we can go ahead and just connect our account. It'll allow us to pull up our what's going on here. Okay, and now it has authorized it. So now we can go over and click okay. So it's cool that it gives you a YouTube live control panel and it also gives you a YouTube chat right here inside of OBS. Okay, so now we can click start recording or start streaming and that'll all happen from OBS. OBS can be a great option. I think that it requires some technical know-how. So if you're not wanting to deal with problems that might come up, you should probably use other means for streaming. Boxcast and Resi are both great platforms. I highly recommend using Resi when streaming through ProPresenter. If we go to the live capture settings button here in ProPresenter, you can see that Resi integration is a destination that we can utilize and then just log into your account and hit start streaming. You can also very simply select RTMP and then type in your address and key for your live stream right here and then select your audio for routing. It's coming through channels three and four like I show in other videos. And now we can start streaming. Whatever's on the stream output layer, that is what's going to be streamed and you can change that source right here. So how do you do cameras inside of this? Real quick, go to settings, inputs. We're gonna select for video input one, go ahead and select my recorder 3G. I think it's mad because OBS is running and it's like, I am not sharing. <laughs> Okay, so try that again. Go to no video source and then recorder 3G. There you go. Okay, so now we have video and then we're gonna go over to the audio inputs tab. We're gonna select auto off so that uh, it'll work. And now we're gonna select our Scarlet interface here. And under routing, I'm gonna select, cause I want this audio to come into channels three and four, but I only have audio on channel one. So three and four is getting the audio from channel one. And now I can just double check my audio tab. I'm sending main output to one and two. Perfect. So now in ProPresenter, if I go to the media bin, open that up in the top right section, I can go down to video inputs and I'm gonna select a new video input and we're gonna click on that. And now I see my video and I see my audio coming out the right side and I see my lower third text. And as I click through this, it will show me the lower thirds from this song. So this would basically be your A10 video switcher coming into ProPresenter, into your computer. And I think it's just as easy to live stream from within ProPresenter if you're going to live stream from your computer. It's sometimes great to have a second computer that you're live streaming through, especially if the primary computer is already doing a lot. But 
however you want to do it, there's many different options. If you think OBS is the best solution for your church, maybe you don't pay for two licenses of ProPresenter or have a campus license so that you can have more than one machine running ProPresenter. But I see a lot of people using their main ProPresenter setup for both presenting and live streaming. It is true that it's nice to separate those so that if there's a problem, you don't have to worry about it taking out your live stream and your main ability to put graphics on the stream. But there is also the cool ability to like set up a macro, start streaming. I think they're kind of dangerous, but start streaming, stop streaming, go to add action, go to capture, start capture, and we'll use the active settings. And then you can also set up one to stop capture. So add action, capture, stop capture. And there you go. So now you can start and stop your live stream right from there. Okay, well, we covered a lot of stuff today about OBS, about ProPresenter. Thank you for watching. Check out my other videos right here on YouTube if you're interested in going deeper on this topic for your church. Maybe consider signing up for a training one-on-one -on -one meeting with me, and we will spend a session going over all of this for your setup on your computer. Have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye.